there is a growing movement of people uh, on the online right who are beginning to seed conspiracy theories about the Trump assassination attempt. And you need to understand that part of this is a lot of the people doing it get clicks on Twitter. If you go into their tweets where they offer up some conspiracy theory, uh, it's actually monetized. Uh, as they get clicks on their tweets and, and you see ads in those comments, they get money. So they have every incentive to incentivize you to come hear their conspiracy theories that clearly something deeply rotten within the government transpired to get Donald Trump killed. And so they decided to rely on a lone wolf 20-year-old who wasn't actually a great shot uh, and came close to getting lucky. But the left has to fan the flames against Donald Trump. I mean, MSNBC really is essentially a, a network rooting for Donald Trump's assassination at this point with their rhetoric. He is the heat that keeps their coalition alive. Eric Hoffer was a conservative philosopher. He had a quote, uh, intellectuals cannot operate at room temperature. Intellectuals cannot operate at room temperature, and neither can the Democratic Party right now. This is why the Democrats are going into the, this, this insane level of heated rhetoric and madness. Um, this is Jonathan Capehart. Again, keep in mind, Jonathan Capehart was on MSNBC on Saturday night, and as Donald Trump was being shot, it was in a lower box on the screen. And he was talking to a progressive activist tied to the Biden administration or Biden campaign, who, as Donald Trump is being shot in the little window, is calling Donald Trump a, a criminal, a corrupt, and a traitor. Calling Donald Trump a traitor on television as the bullet is flying through Donald Trump's ear. It was Jonathan K. Part show. And yesterday on NPR or PBS, rather, he was pushing back on the idea that the Democrats are vilifying Donald Trump. Yes, the left has vilified Donald Trump. I'm sorry, define vilified. You can, you can argue the merits, but in fairness, the left has vilified Donald Trump, threat Wait, to democracy, that he's a... Is that a vilification or an actual... He's a proto-fascist. Oh, oh, is that a vilification? And I'm not, I don't mean to argue right. with you, Jeff, but I, I, I disagree with this notion that the left has vilified Donald Trump. The left has pointed out multiple things he has done as president, has said as president, as a candidate for, for the presidency again, that deserve to be pointed out, deserve to be criticized. That's yeah, You got that? Um, we're not vilifying Donald Trump. We're just talking about uh, how much we hate Donald Trump and his bad character, and we're saying all the things he did are a threat to democracy. This is very much got to be poultice because uh, Joe Biden defended himself on NBC News the same way that um, – that Donald Trump is a threat to democracy and we have to talk about the things he said and the things he's done. The Democrats need Donald Trump. They need the heat directed towards Donald Trump. So it's not going to get better. They're, they're not going to tone down the rhetoric because first, they don't believe they've done anything wrong. They don't believe they've done anything wrong. They're okay if Donald Trump dies. They think the republic will be saved. I mean, ultimately, there's this. If you believe that Donald Trump is the second coming of Hitler or that Donald Trump is a fascist or that Donald Trump is the end of democracy, somebody's got to do something because the polling suggests Joe Biden's not going to beat him. So someone needs to kill him. That's where the Democrats are headed with this. They know they're headed with this. Very few of them will say it publicly, but they're all going to be OK with it. The Lincoln Project, uh, when not out covering up um, the issues with boys has released a video that explicitly compares Donald Trump to Hitler, including black and white video of the Third Reich to tie it to Donald Trump. They know what they're doing. They're willing to play with the fire because they need the fire. The Lincoln Project has to, has to run right up to the edge because they need the donors, and the donors want to give to the fire. The same with the rest of the Democratic Party. 
the Democratic Party is playing with fire because the fire brings in cash for them. And the fire is what's going to motivate people to go vote for Joe Biden because they're not voting for Joe Biden. Joe Biden has given them nothing to vote for. They're going to vote against Donald Trump. They have to keep the heat on Donald Trump. They have to keep the rhetoric amped up on Donald Trump. They have to do this. The media needs him for ratings. They must continue to heat up the flames, keep the situation going, and maybe have a few more shots taken at Donald Trump because it's what will motivate their base. I have said for a while that you can only motivate people so long with anger. You need to give people something to vote for. It is easier to give people something to vote for. You give people something to vote for, they have a cause to join. But when you can't give people something to vote for, you give them something to hate. Now, the passion and the energy that goes into anger and hate burns hotter and dissipates quicker than the joy and the passion of something that sustains you and gives you something to vote for. And every time the passion and the emotion and the energy of anger and rage begins to burn out of the Democratic Party, they have to throw more wood on the fire. They have to find something else to keep the outrage going as they're burning out their voters, as they're spreading this wildfire. That's what they're doing with Donald Trump. They need him. And they also need their crowd to hate him. And they need their crowd to hate the Democrats. Now, you need to understand this is bipartisan. There are parts of the Republican Party doing the same thing. I see it in particular on social media. Yeah, many of them are making money off of fanning flames of hatred on social media. Many of them are headed in that direction. They want you to hate the left. Both sides have an incentive for you to believe everything is on the line. The country is going to end if the other side wins. And you better stick with them and give them money and you better hate. Hate is profitable. Hate is actually far more profitable than joy or love or hope. Hate is profitable because hate triggers the most passion. It's a passion that does burn out quick unless you keep adding wood to the fire. Keep pouring on gasoline. You get burned out quick. So you have to constantly amp it up. That's why now we've moved on on the left to the conspiracy theories about Donald Trump. Because the hatred was there of Donald Trump and Donald Trump got shot. And there's a recoiling moment. Every American across the board has a recoiling moment of, oh my gosh, what have we done? What has what the rhetoric done? What has the violence done? What has this individual guy done? What has happened? So the left has to come back in and say, he wasn't really shot. And if he was shot, he was shot by his own side. The kid had registered as a Republican, so we're not to blame. He's to blame. And he's lying. Pay no attention to the teleprompter not being broken. It was the teleprompter class that hit him, not a bullet. If it was a bullet, it had to be a high-caliber bullet. If it was a high-caliber bullet, it would have taken his ear off, and his ear is still there. Therefore, he wasn't shot. He's lying again. This is more Donald Trump lies. It's what they have to do. And the left, of course, believes itself righteous and true. So it doesn't believe their side is lying. It doesn't believe they're being lied to by their side. They believe their side are the truth tellers. They believe their side are the righteous side. It's those Republicans who are the liars. And look at Donald Trump. He put that kid on the roof. That's why security wasn't covering him, because Donald Trump said that kid was going to be up there. And so they stayed away from the roof so that kid could try to shoot him and knew to shoot the teleprompter and have the glass hit Donald Trump. And that's what's happening here. This is all a false flag setup. Donald Trump is trying to get people's sympathy by trying to get himself shot, except he wasn't getting himself shot. That kid knew to hit the teleprompter glass. And Donald Trump has federal authorities lying on his behalf, saying that it was glass or a bullet when it was really glass.
That's what's going on here. And they have no, they, they, they don't believe their side's lying to them. It's the right that lies. All of this heads to more violence. And then, of course, they get on social media and they're shocked and appalled when their comments surface because they're surrounded by other people who think like them. Several people in the last 48 hours have lost their jobs by going on social media and regretting that the bullet didn't hit Donald Trump. All their friends said the same thing. They're shocked to say it on social media and realize there are people in America who don't want Donald Trump dead. In their cloistered bubble of progressives, everybody wants him dead. Everybody at MSNBC wants Donald Trump dead. Everybody at NBC is is a little bit sad that the bullet missed. They know they can't say it publicly. Comcast will fire them. They took Morning Joe off on Monday as a warning sign to the rest of the network. You better watch what you say. If we can take out our top show, we can take you out as well. You better be careful. Because they've been fanning the flames for so long. They've been feeding the fire for so long. They're running out of fuel for the fire. Just as it's revealed, Joe Biden is in mental and physical decline more rapidly than Democrats wanted to realize. They're running out of fuel to the fire, so they've got to find something new. And the new fuel to add to the fire will be J.D. Vance. And sadly, he and his family will be put through the ringer by the left because Joe Biden and his campaign team made a deliberate decision to run the campaign as a campaign about saving American democracy. And when you're starving and you can't afford your groceries and your gas bill is too high for your car and your 401k is in decline, you don't really care about saving democracy. It doesn't look like Democrats are saving democracy. So you've got to amp up the rhetoric harder. And you can always, you can always find a way to justify it and never have to say you're sorry. You can always find that. And when you're on the left, because the media agrees with you, you never have to say you're sorry. Even if someone dies, only the right has to apologize because the left and the media are on the same side. It's going to get far worse before it gets better because the Democrats need it to.